Immigrants in wealthy countries all over the world often send money back to family in their home country. These are called remittances, and there is a lot of money involved. The IMF estimates that it is around $600 billion a year. But the remittance system is fraught with challenges. So we are going to be talking with a company that is looking to solve these problems. Hey everybody, this is Chris Brandt here with Sundish Patel. Welcome to another future podcast. Hey, I just want to take a minute to say, if you want to support the channel, please hit that subscribe button. 95% of the people who watch these videos are not subscribers, and it is the best way to help the channel. As much as 10% of the Philippine economy is said to be remittances, yet only 37% of global remittances are digital. World Remit is looking to change that. They are building a global digital payment system to make sending remittances easier, faster, and less expensive. Today, we have with us from Manila, Earl Malivo, a global payment expert and director of country and business development for World Remit. He's going to fill us in on the growing global remittance market. Welcome, Earl. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for having me and for this opportunity. I'm super excited to talk to you. I think this is a really interesting topic. I think you know, remittances is not something that a lot of people are familiar with unless you, you know, are sending money back home and, and uh, you know, you use the system a lot. Um, but before we get to that, I would love to hear a little bit about, you know, what World Remit is, what was the f sort of founder's idea in starting it and that story. World Remit is a purely digital money transfer company, which means we don't handle cash on the send side. Yeah. Although we enable transfers digitally 24 by 7 by our own app and our web page, obviously, and uh, allowing transfers to 140 plus countries, uh, including payouts through bank accounts, mobile wallets, uh, and even cash um, for certain uh, territories or countries. Uh, we started uh, way back in 2010. Uh, it was um, uh, initially an idea from uh, our co -found, uh, one of our co-founders, Ishmael Ahmed, uh, he's an immigrant from Somali, um, Somaliland in particular. And uh, when he was uh, working early on in the UK and obviously started, uh, well, studied as well uh, in that process, um, he, he had a very hard time sending money back home, uh, which very challenging. Um, and it's very common at that time, meaning uh, for an immigrant who doesn't really know how, how money works in in, in, in the host countries where they are, it's always challenging to find ways on how to send money back home. And that's ironically the very reason why you actually migrated or, or worked abroad, right? Uh, it's for you mm -hmm. to send money back home. Uh, it was very challenging, I'd say, but we've come a long way. Um, and uh, we're very proud to say that we're one of the uh, companies that really contributed positively to uh, migrants and their fami families and also uh, to the wider economy of, of these um uh, countries like, for example, the Philippines. It's 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 a surprisingly large amount of money, and it's an and it's an it's a surprisingly large part of many countries' um, economy. I I was just pulling up some statistics here. The top country for remittances uh, apparently is India, and in 2021, I see they did 87 billion dollars in remittances. China did 53 billion, Mexico 53 billion, and then Philippines comes in at 36 billion dollars. I mean, those are those are some really big numbers, right? Indeed, absolutely. And uh, as you mentioned, uh, it's actually 10 percent of our GDP as a country. So 10 percent of economy of, our, of the Philippine economy is coming or being supported by overseas Filipinos sending money back home. So that's how huge uh, and and important it is. Uh, not just for the economy, actually, even for our culture. Um, at the very fabric of our society, one in every 10 Filipinos are actually uh, working abroad. And uh, that says a lot of uh, uh, characteristics, I I'd say, why uh, remittances are, are actually very important for us. Yeah, and, and you know, it's, it's amazing how much of people's income goes to that, too. I mean, I remember years, many years ago, I was waiting tables in a restaurant, uh, not a good restaurant, um, and there was a guy who worked there, Dominic was his name, and he was a Mexican immigrant and he would work all day at a grocery store and then all night, uh, bussing tables at, at this restaurant. I mean, the guy worked pretty much nonstop and he spent, sent almost every cent he made back home. 
you know, I mean, it's, in, it's incredible, like how, um, how important that is to some families. Indeed. And that's where companies like us really comes in. I mean, um, it, it's more than the service that we provide. It's the value of the service that we provide. And, and, and why we're here is, is really to essentially support them and their families back home. Yeah. And I, I think that's why it's like, this is such a critical thing, because I think, you know, we're not talking about really rich people sending money around the world, right? <laughs> I mean, you're talking about yeah. $600 billion from people like Dominic who are just like, you know, bussing tables or, you know, doing hard, you know, jobs and not making a lot of money, right? And they're sending a lot of money back home. So, you know, you, they wouldn't be doing that if it wasn't super critical, right? Indeed. Absolutely. Absolutely. So we, we've kind of talked about what remittances are and, and you know, what, how they're so incredibly important. But, you know, one of the things, you know, I, I mentioned it, you're making it easier and you're making it more cost effective and faster. Um, can you talk about, you know, sort of the mechanics of remittances and how you're able to, um, you know, change that game up by, by digitizing all this? Several years back, uh, it was predominantly uh, offline, which means you go to a physical location uh, at your available time, obviously, usually a weekend, uh, you send the money in cash the recipient receives the money in cash as well. Mm -hmm. That's how it used to be. Now it's very different. And how long would that take typically? I mean, like when you did that, did it that way, how long was? Even days. Yeah. Uh, it can be as fast as an hour or two hours. It depends on obviously your time zone, right? Uh, someone sending it um, afternoon P Philippines would, uh, sorry, sending afternoon in the US, sending to the Philippines would obviously be morning time, our time uh, when you receive it, right? So it takes about a few hours for it to be, actually available but I, I'm I mean for the for the for the offline sort of paper version how mm. long would that whole process from start to end take it can be hours or even days used to be like that yeah I mean I, I would imagine that would take a long time to to get those yes uh, and even actually if you talk about the earlier digital versions of remittances via Swift for example it takes days yeah. Um, yeah even no you're if you, you're already sending to a bank account it takes days but that's not the case anymore. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the important role that we play in as yeah. a digital company. We basically enable uh, any person to send 24 by 7 at the, at the convenience of their hand, basically in, through a mobile phone um, or uh, access via the internet. So it shortens the period of sending money and not just sending money, but also receiving money mm -hmm. because the recipients nowadays, uh, given the emergence of mobile wallets, uh, particularly in developing countries like the Philippines, uh, you can receive remittances in a few seconds, in mm. just a couple of minutes. It's that fast already. And even sending cash, uh, say, for example, you want to send money now, there are already cash payout locations that caters 24 by 7. And also, you can do it using your mobile phone, which I can actually pick up once I get the reference number, which is usually just uh, sent to me by SMS by WorldMet, for example. Um, the recipient can, as soon as he gets uh, the SMS, he can go to the cash pickup location and, and get the money. But the critical thing that happened, and I want to stress it out because this catalyst really um, was experienced during the pandemic. Um, many senders who used to send offline, although they send it to bank accounts or to mobile wallets pre-pandemic, they're actually now sending it online, which means more senders and more recipients are actually sending money and receiving money 24 by 7 almost instantly. Mm. And, and that's a, a, a very meaningful impact uh, to the families, particularly here uh, at the receiving countries. Um, for example, you have an emergency, you need money, you can actually just speak to your sender and, hey, can you send me money? And you can do it instantly. So that's how important the likes of World Remit uh, 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 plays out or provides for uh, not just again for this for the senders but also for the recipients. So uh, you know the world of remittances is kind of a complex thing because you know obviously you're dealing with many different countries, many different economic systems, many different currencies. Some of these currencies are very volatile. So I know one of the challenges in the remittance world is your you know like and 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 the speed of the remittance kind of matters too because if yeah. you take money from somebody and then it's two or three days before it gets paid out, 
you know, yeah. currency rates are fluctuating, you know, that could be, you know, that could go up and it could go down, right? And and so I, I, I'd imagine in the remittance world, you have to kind of buffer for a lot of that activity, right? Uh, absolutely. That's the reason why we need to uh, consistently monitor the movements in the FX markets where we operate in. Number one, that's very critical for us to know what the benchmark rates are. And uh, obviously, we as a low-cost company, we provide almost um, near benchmark rates for our customers so that they get more money out of the ones that they're sending back home. Uh, number two, we need, well, th there is increasing competition um, uh, within the remittance space. Uh, it's not just with the traditional ones, but more importantly, those that are digital savvy, such as World Remit. Mm -hmm. um, with increased competition, there's always better pricing. So right. I think um, given that there is increasing competition and higher efficiencies, uh, even for existing players or traditional players, as we call them, uh, it only creates more value for our customers. So competition is good. It also makes us good as a company or better as a company. And uh, at the end of the day, um, uh, it's always better for the customers. Yeah, I got to imagine like one, you know, you, we talk about saving money and, and I think that's a really yeah. important piece. I mean, cert certainly the faster is, is really critical too for people who have an yeah. emergencies and things like that. But you know, saving money, uh, you know, because I got to imagine a lot of these payments are not really big payments anyways. And you're taking it, you know, like yeah. some of these remittance places are taking a lot of chunk out of that, a big chunk out of that. Um, and I got it. So like, you, you know, obviously, you know, we hear about di digitizing things. That is a cost savings. But I got to imagine the speed at which you do things, you know, helps with that as well, because like getting it through, you you kind of have a better handle on what the exchange rates and things like that are. So you can kind of, Absolutely. you know, shrink that. Can you talk about how, how it is, you know, the mechanics of how you save money here? Uh, there are multiple facets for you to actually consider in uh, when whenever we say we save money through digitizing remittances. So first off, on the FX side, which obviously is the base conversion of um, how much money you are sending and how much money the recipient is receiving. So with digital companies like us, since we are able to monitor uh, foreign exchange prices, uh, much faster than traditional ones. Um, so digitizing things obviously means we're actually providing near market rates, hmm. more competitive rates, uh, more competitive in the sense that, you know, uh, when it was purely traditional or offline before, because of the cost structure that they have, agents from the sending side, the middle, uh, the, the processing company, the remittance company, and also the uh, payout agent, um, all sharing within that cost structure, I, you can only imagine how much cost that is uh, for, for senders, mm -hmm. right? But because we are able to efficiently do it by introducing lesser or streamlining uh, the cost structure that we have, on the foreign exchange, we're able to monitor pricing. On the cost side, we're able to lessen the, the players, if I would put it, in a remittance chain uh, or process flow. And, and thirdly, on the fees itself, because of increased competition, because, well, there's always better service out there and we try to be that better service, right? We, we try to offer meaningful uh, pricing for our customers. So like, for example, a few years back, uh, it takes about, what, $10 for you to send to an account. And uh, now it only takes uh, roughly $1.99 or even $2 or even less than that. In the case of World Remit, we actually even provide promotional pricing uh, almost permanently. So we waive your first three transfers using a promo code, uh, three free. And uh, once you sign up, you just use that code and your first three transfers are on us. So th in, in, in this, these are the types of promotions and pricing mechanisms that are already in the market and that benefits uh, our target customers. Now, multi facets that you, you need to consider FX, uh, better FX because of better, uh, well, near real time monitoring of FX movements, um, uh, di digitizing the cost structure, and uh, obviously the, the pricing because of increased competition uh, by the likes of World Remit, uh, which are primarily cost efficient companies. So, yeah, we, we ultimately create better, better uh, um, um, uh, value for our customer. So um, the other thing I think that's got to be really tricky with all of this is that every country has a different system, right? Mm -hmm. and, and, and you're, I would imagine, dealing with some countries that, you know, have, you know, somewhat underdeveloped economic systems in place, too. I mean, that has got to be a lot to navigate, right? 
Uh, yes, uh, actually. And uh, we've been experiencing that since day one. Um, however, the good thing is that since we are primarily technology savvy, uh, technology based company, we tend to uh, work with uh, like minded companies. Um, so, and also, if I would put it, be- because of the pandemic, primarily, it, it, it basically pushed everyone to be digital savvy. Um, even our payout partners have developed their systems for us. Even the governments, like the Philippines, for example, we have now uh, a real-time processing of uh, funds from one bank to another. And mm. we're actually benefiting from it because one of our bank partners or a couple of our, our bank partners are able to process uh, transfers uh, in near real time. So markets have mo- are moving generally and are improving generally, uh, but uh, companies like us are, are really paving the way for 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 digitizing and, and obviously making the all the, the overall cost structures uh, beneficial for 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 senders and recipients. So I got to imagine there's there's a few countries though for you that have to be just really difficult to yes to operate well, there, in. There will always be a challenge um, anywhere you operate, uh, Chris. It's just that how you actually navigate as a company in, in addressing those challenges. There were very difficult situations before. Uh, for example, when the um, uh, Nigerian government actually dollarized, quote unquote, their economy a couple of years back, uh, it all of a sudden remittances need to be paid out in U.S. dollars. Mm. So it, it's a challenge because we've been doing dual currencies in that space, and you cannot shift ninety percent of the market overnight, right? But we did. Right. It's it was because well, first and foremost, we worked with the government. Number one. Number two, uh, you work with the right partners to help you navigate through that regulatory challenge, for example, or economic challenge at that. And uh, we continue to do so. There, there, there are still, there will always be challenges uh, wherever we, we operate, and especially in developing countries. Actually, even in, in the countries, uh, in the developed countries where we, we allow sending money from, there, there will always be challenges. Given that we are a technology first company, uh, we're quite an expert in navigating through those changes and then those stages that needed to be needed to happen even overnight. It's interesting you mentioned the developed side of it because um, you know I got to imagine like you know sending money from the U.S. has got to be really complicated too because of sanctions and you know all yeah. sorts of regulations and restrictions. And then I mean like you're talking about a country that switches its cu- currency to U.S. dollars. I mean like even delivering dollars, <laughs> you know, there's probably all sorts of complications around using that as currency in another country and transmitting that that value too. I would imagine, right? We always learn. Uh, but the uh, good thing is that uh, we do have experts uh, to help us uh, learn and, and adapt quickly. Uh, Earl, can you give me a sense of what is the end user experience? So like, let's just say I want to send money to somebody in uh, India. It is, it is as simple as I download the app, they download the app, create an account. What other inf- information do they have to provide? You know, I'm trying to get a sense of the end user experience because the simpler that is, I, you know, obviously, the more you you hope people would would be remitting. That's a good one, uh, and and I'd like to stress out why World Remit is standing out in this space. Firstly, um, you don't need to fill in any uh, obviously any hard copies or paper for that. You just download the app. Go to uh, it's available by iOS or Android users. Uh, you can also web- visit our website worldremit.com. Uh, or again, um, get our app, World Remit, um, download it. You just need to provide a few details. Uh, these are, well, required um, by the governments where we operate in, uh, but only a few details, minimum details. Uh, in some countries, we ask um, valid IDs to authenticate you as a person, obviously, uh, so that it, our system not does not uh, get abused by by fraudsters, for example. So we we, authentic- we the first thing that we do is we ask for your details. Uh, a few details that are uh, compliant with the minimum requirements that we have uh, to provide or to to um, uh, record as a company. And then you choose where you're sending from, say, in the U.S., and then you choose um, how you would like uh, your recipient to receive the money. Uh, obviously, you, 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 receive, you, you select the uh, receive uh, country that you're sending the money to. So, for example, Philippines or India, for example. And then you choose the service how you'd like the money uh, gets across. So you choose a bank amongst the list of banks that we provide in India. Uh, we're connected to almost all banks in India, by the way. 
So, uh, and then uh, pay for the remittance via, either via your debit or credit card, for example. And then uh, just a, a few taps. And that's it. Basically, you just provide the details that, that are needed for your transactions to go through. Uh, I can tell you it's probably less than 10 minutes. If you're very fast in typing things in, you, you can probably do it in five minutes. And then the next time you actually send money to the same person, you actually just select the same recipient and you can do it even faster. Just probably less than two minutes. So that's how convenient it is uh, when, whenever you, you choose World Remit. And then is there just a, a, a charge for each transaction? Is that how it works? Well, um, with the current promo, uh, whenever you sign up at World Remit and use a promo code three free, we, you don't basically yeah, pay it was three, the number three, number F-R-E-E. three, and then F-R-E-E, yes. Okay, I just um, want to make sure people can get that. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> at worldremit.com. <laughs> Yes, or uh, our own app. So yeah, you just um, uh, input that promo code. And then for your first three transfers, we don't actually charge you uh, any fee. Uh, we provide one of the most competitive rates. So you can be assured of that. You can even compare rates to other providers. I'm very confident we, we can beat them uh, in terms of pricing for FX, for example. And then, uh, yeah, it's, it's basically, it saves you money for one, because you don't pay fees at least for the first three transfers. And then uh, your recipient gets more money because we provide uh, very competitive rates. This topic kind of hits home for me. You know, Chris said in the earlier part, um, India, I think, was number one in the in, yes. in terms of remittances. So that's the way we grew up, right? Like, uh, and I think this is a topic that's very near and dear to many immigrant families in the U.S., quite honestly, uh, because we've all seen it firsthand. Uh, you know, I've seen... So many family members come to America, get tough jobs like Dominic, like the, that Chris was talking about, you know, unless they're not the most uh, glamorous jobs um, or people coming from Mexico into the U.S. and then sending money back to Mexico. That's big, too. Um, but how helpful that is to the families back in other countries. You know, I think the the value of the service that you're providing is just so incredible um, and so needed, you know, in, in this, you know, these days we, we talk about this, um, wealth disparity, you know, across our world, you know, it's growing everywhere and it's just, it's getting worse and worse, right? The rich get richer and, you know, the middle class gets shrunk. And so this is an amazing opportunity for, for people to help other people in other countries, you know, and quite honestly, we need more of that, just because we need more love in this world and we need to, <laughs> you know, we, we, we need to be looking out for each other. Cause there's definitely, you know, the way I grew up in an Asian Indian family, um, there is this cultural part of it where you almost feel, uh, it's your duty. Obligated. It's your duty <laughs> to make, it's your obligation that if you are in America and you are doing, uh, you know, you have a job and if you can, you send money back. I mean, that's just, a, it's just part of the culture, right? Even multi-generational migrants. So for example, Filipinos in the US, they've been there then since 1970s or early 60s even. Um, the Those that are already born in the US, they keep they still keep sending money. So, I mean, to their loved ones in the, in, in the Philippines, it, it may not be their direct family, but extended family, for example, your uncle or aunties or even your grandparents who, you only met once or twice, but you still give money to them. It's basically ingrained in our culture uh, to send our love back home, right? I mean, yeah. to support them. And particularly for, for new migrants, uh, the reason why they actually went abroad is really to provide for their families, to, uh, to sustain their families for everyday expenses, to build a home for them. Uh, and and buy a car that they, they that they dream about, or even basic transportation for them, or uh, businesses for their families back home. So it's it's deeply ingrained in all cultures, particularly um, in in our countries uh, or the countries of our parents, for example. So yeah, I think it's it's, it's and, and primarily because we were uh, co-founded by a by an by a migrant himself, um, and and that speaks volume about why we're here as a company. And, and that's what we strive for, really, to provide value or valuable service for, 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 for our customers and their families back home. That's, yeah. that's cool. I mean, that's, that's got to be satisfying to, to be able to do that. And I think, you know, like we were saying, it's like, it, it's, it's, you know, people who are, are 
given it their all and, you know, it, to make it less expensive, I think is really important. Well, it's really quite fascinating, right? Like just look at, all, just imagine the millions and millions of people that are doing this, right? Like the amount of people that are- Hundreds of millions of people are doing this. Yeah, so hundreds of millions of people are doing this. And it's such a selfless act, you know? Like there's literally people m moving to the US for the purpose yeah. that they are now going to be the, you know, the economic engine for the family. Yeah, and friendly. their job is literally to be in the US, ha have a job, and then send money back, right? And they do it with such pride and such selflessness. And it's to them, it's like, almost like um, they, they're thankful that they're the ones that they're chosen one, yeah. you know, but, but we don't look at the, the lifestyle that they're living, the things that they are giving up in order to help other, other people in their families. You know, it's, there's, there's so many hundreds of millions of stories out there, you know, uh, that, and that's, so that's, what's really cool about what I'm, what I'm learning about the world remit, um, uh, organization is that's the, the impact that, that you must be having must be so satisfying. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and to stress further, uh, we're actually um, comprised of a uh, di very diversified uh, uh, number of people within the company. I mean, uh, most of us uh, fly to flags, for example, um, right? I mean, they, they think about their families back home. They, they are welcomed as migrants in their host countries, like the US, for example. So they are both contributing to the economies of the host country, but also obviously to the economies of the receiving country. And, and that direct relationship between them and the recipients, uh, we do fully recognize that. And we try to build services around, not just for senders, we're now even looking into recipients providing uh, other services outside of remittances for them. So it's deeply ingrained in the culture of, of the company as well, uh, that, uh, this migrant economy and the services around it needs to be provided better. Uh, that's what we're trying to achieve as a company. Yeah, I got to imagine there's a million stories out yeah. there about how remittances change lives. I mean, ha <laughs> have you heard any really interesting stories about people in remittances? Uh, yes, uh, actually, uh, and, and good that you mentioned that. We recently did a promotion with uh, one of our partners uh, wherein we gave away uh, livelihood packages to the recipients mm. of uh, two of our customers. So we did that with uh, one of the biggest banks in the country, uh, if not the biggest bank. And uh, we granted uh, uh, this livelihood packages wherein um, they uh, receive remittances regularly. But on top of that, because we wanted to help them further, uh, we gave them this livelihood package that would enable them to be somehow independent financially as well. So we, we try to do meaningful things like that because, as I said, at the end of the day, it's, we, we do a lot of impact, meaningful impact, um, not just on remittances alone, but, but also to, the, to, to, I mean, socially speaking um, and, uh, as well. So, yeah, we, we, we as a company try to... Uh, hear out these stories with our customers and know them better and obviously provide them better services in the process. Well, it's, it's really cool stuff. And I think it's, you know, stuff that, you know, a lot of people just are not aware of. And um, I'm glad we could, you know, shine some light on, on, you know, the world of remittances and, and really how big it is. I mean, it's hundreds of millions of people sending, you know, small amounts of money that total up to, 600 plus billion probably going up to 700 billion in the near Annually, future yeah. and yeah i mean it it's it's a huge 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 market um and uh it, you know congratulations on your success to date and you know uh excited Thanks. to see you know where you go from here and 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 how it all plays out and i really appreciate you coming on and telling us the story thanks Always. so much for being on Always a pleasure speaking with uh, with you guys. I mean, I mean, uh, we've 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 we see how important it is to communicate these uh, stories as well through uh, your channels, for example. And uh, we are thankful that we got to be invited and be part of this program. So thank you, Chris and yeah. Sudesh. Anytime, anytime. Of course. Thanks a lot. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. And if you like what you saw, please give us a like. Think about subscribing. That's really the best way to support this channel. 
and I will see you in the next video.